action. Live from Los Angeles, California, I'd like to welcome my very special guest today, a man who has traveled on a professional road which outdoes any movie in its drama, its risks, its highs and lows. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very proud to present Winslow Harris. Welcome, Winslow. Uh, thank you. It's, um, it's a real thrill to be here. What about this pilot you're shooting? Uh, it's about a, a boxer who, um, he's punch drunk. That's what they, you know. Um, so it's quite coincidental that I'm, I'm doing the program with it, you. It must be a bit of a stretch for you, Ian, isn't it? <laughs> Playing old punch drunk boxer? Yeah, totally, mate, totally. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's well within my range. You know, when you're 25 and you're at the top of your game and, um, you know, you're 10 foot bulletproof. Beaming down on Central Park, the goal! Oh, Roberts! Roberts has pulled off a smashing tackle! Scene six, take three, marker. What did you ask me? Ian's latest role. Sorry, what did you ask me? Oh. Something like that, isn't it? And then, From yeah, that's right. Sure. He's one he fears he may also be living. I got knocked out a number of times during my professional career, yeah. Did I hit that hard? I mean, it's nothing personal. It's a head ringer. It's a, it's, it's a ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. You, you can hear the bells. And those bells are sounding an alarm around the sporting world. He was out before he hit the ground. Repeated concussion has been linked to a disease causing dementia. Not just the pros, the damage can begin early. You can basically say nearly every game you've played, you've had that moment at some point in the game where mm. your head's dinged and you've, you've felt that that shake. Every, you know, like basically every game you've ever played. I was about four or five when I first started playing league, and I'd played, I've played ever since. It was, you know, I was no different to every other kid on the block. Ian grew up in Sydney. He has two sisters and a brother. More than anything, he loved his footy. Let's go back to 1986. Let's have a look at how this happened. He went up, he couldn't handle. Ouch. And he... Ouch. Yeah. You were totally gone. Uh, I'd driven to the, to, to the game, but we had to, my dad drove me home, and we had to come back the next day and look for my car. I could not remember where I parked the car. I'd lost the whole day. It's those experiences that I'm worried about, because there's three different times in my, in my memory that I lost the whole day. I've quite literally lost the whole day. Bad luck for Roberts. He was one of the key players for Manly. He'd been standing in tackles extremely well. Too often, knocked out. And then, in 1995, he came out, the first high-profile Australian sportsman to reveal that he was gay. It wasn't such a big issue to me. Mm. Uh, but I still remember, you know, the controversy. After retiring in 1998, Ian was accepted into NIDA, Australia's leading acting school. Then he went to Hollywood and secured some tough guy roles. Often cast as the muscle, Ian keeps in shape. His body couldn't be fitter, but his mind is letting him down. Ian finds it increasingly difficult to remember his lines. You know, I've been acting now for 10 years. Uh, studying lines and that type of thing. You know, one day you got it down and, and then a day later you're like, I've just lost all that information again. Whitehead, Williams, clever actually, to get his boot to it, force it forward to the pocket, out of play. Williams has moved. Your brain is jello floating inside of a, a bone bucket you're with your skull. And every time it moves around quickly, your brain is stretching and pulling and can be bashing into those rigid sides of your brain, causing injury. You've played more than 10 years of football. Right now, over 95% have shown positive for the disease. This is Chris Nowinski from Boston University School of Medicine. Chris Nowinski and his team of scientists have been studying the brains of American footballers discovering time and again a disease known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. It essentially kind of causes your brain to rot, like memory problems, impulse control issues, depression, and that eventually you, you may get dementia if you live long enough. The only way the disease can be detected is by dissecting the brain. And so far, only the brains of dead American footballers have been tested. That's about to change. 
Thank you all for being here today to celebrate the amazing life of Barry Hugh Robert Taylor. Barry Tizza Taylor was a good rugby player and coach. He was my coach in the Australian under-21s in 1982. Peter Fitzsimons comes away with the ball showing his brute strength. He really is a very strong man. We will aim for the top. Uh, if you don't aim for the top, you'll never get there. And uh, it's always been my intention to do the very best we can. And I always say we because it's not I, it's we, it's us, you know. And then it's us versus them. Enid, your first memories of Barry playing football? A very hard player. He never took a step backwards. Mm. Enid and Barry met at the local surf club. They married in 1961 and had two children, Stephen and Jenny. In his later years, though, Tizza's mind began to deteriorate. And before he was 60, he had dementia. There was no family history of the disease, only a long history of Barry being concussed. Then I started to think about it all those times at the bottom of rucks and being kicked perhaps in the head and what have you. In April last year, Barry Taylor died. Tizza was 77, but he had one last play left in him. His family agreed to send his brain to the US to become the first Australian sportsman to be tested for CTE. It was incredible to get a brain from Australia. We've never gotten a brain from that distance. 16,000 kilometres away, Tizza Taylor's family is about to get the results. Good morning, Mr. Taylor, Mrs. Taylor. Jenny, how are you? Fine, thank you. Thanks. Good thank morning. You. His brain only weighed about 1,000 grams, which is quite small for an adult man. Uh, when we dissected uh, the brain, uh, it was uh, very abnormal. He had so much cell loss. Just a lot of destruction. Uh, so these were really quite uh, dramatic uh, changes, uh, some of the worst that we've ever seen, but, but these changes uh, are diagnostic of, of chronic traumatic encephalopathy and, and an extremely severe or an advanced case. Wow. Oh, we're stunned. You know, I've, I've got to say, for my sister and I and her two children, this is like... Uh, a relief. I hate to sound selfish, but this is an amazing relief. I mean, we've been, I don't know about you, but I've been worried for a long time that, of course, this is genetic and we're going to cop this too. And having right. watched this, you know, hor horrendous thing, you know, and to think, oh, thank God it's, it's not genetic, you know what I mean? But despite the mounting evidence, concussions are still not managed properly. Just look at the examples from last year. St Kilda defender Dylan Robertson playing against Port Adelaide, clearly concussed, and yet he stayed on the field. Ten minutes later, he gave this interview. How badly was he affected? You be the judge. Boys, it showed a little bit there late in that quarter just to work your way back into it. Yeah, obviously they, they got a fair run at the start, so we just focused on trying to set. Settle down, settling down. Oh, you, you, you copped the big one from Tommy Jonas, are you all right? Yeah. Worst of all, rugby union. Against the Lions, George Smith, Wallaby flanker, has a terrible head clash, is knocked cold by his own admission, can't walk, he's assisted from the field. He passes the sideline concussion test and five minutes later, he's back out there again. I watched that film of George Smith and just thinking about how many people failed him at that moment. I mean, the medical staff not holding him out, the coaches not seeing that he couldn't walk on his own and not saying, I'm not putting him back in. His teammates, I don't know if anybody stepped up and said, hey, he's no good, you can't put him back on the field. But, you know, somebody whose brain is actually functioning needs to stand up for him. So what is the solution? I say the bleeding obvious. If you are clearly concussed, then it is a mandatory four-week stand down. No ifs, no buts, no excuses, no appeals. But continuing business as usual is not an option, for it's now clear that the damage that can be done by ignoring concussion is terrifying.
Ian Roberts has travelled to Melbourne to learn whether his years of football have inflicted any permanent damage to the brain. Already, 40 AFL players have been tested, and the news is not good. So you've just completed your testing. Out of 40 former Aussie Rules players, how many showed signs of brain damage? Um, 35. That sounds shocking. Yeah, look, uh, it was, <laughs> absolutely. Just make yourself comfortable, because yep. we'll, uh, we'll set you up. So what we need to do is just put uh, a few electrodes on your hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the, uh, the activity of your brain. First, Ian's brain is stimulated. And his response times are measured. Ready? Yep. Yep. Good. And relax. Then there's a memory test. In all of them, just give it your best shot. Ian must remember the shapes and the order they appear. So, yeah. Oh dear. Now I'm just lost. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> so I can just run through it and I'll. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. 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 That was close, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, when you're ready to go, I'll start timing you. Two, one, go. Do as fast as you can. Finally, a timed motor skills test. In all, two hours of brain draining exercises. Great. Well done. OK. Thanks, Ian. I'll uh, give me about 30 minutes to uh, analyse the data and uh, I'll, I'll see you soon. All right. I'll wait outside. Yeah. Get no worries. Time. Thanks. <laughs> Be kind. Another 30 minutes to collate the data. Hi, Ian. So what we have here is, on the left, is your data from today. You are outside of the range right. of our healthy comparisons. So it seems to be that multiple concussions are affecting a certain pathway of the brain that can lead to a number of, of different uh, things. So what we're seeing here is, is abnormal. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I can't say that I didn't expect it, having seen the, um, the yeah. show. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. I was waiting across the road. The news was as hard to take as one of his hits. So how do you sum up what he said? Um, I've got brain damage. Since we began filming, Ian Roberts has quit his acting career in Hollywood and moved back home. And if you, uh, if you get dazed throughout the game, don't be afraid to speak up, guys, after a game. Tell someone, tell an official what you, uh, the way you're feeling and what's happened. Ian's future is uncertain. He doesn't want history to repeat itself with the next generation. Like the mascot Jets under 15s, who he once played for. I'd like to present you with a 100 years jersey with the team of the century on it, which you're in. This is fair dinkum. Oh, that's, um... Oh, God, um... Uh, you've... Well, they, they, no, I can't, that's, uh... Fan, honestly, guys, I didn't know, I, that's really kind of you. <laughs> this is about people's health. This is, you know, we, we just can't ignore the... the uh, Statistics or the research, you know, like any parent now who sends their kid to school and, they, and their kids are playing contact sports at school, mm. they need to be educated, they need to know about these results. Oh, 